Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and I just watched Empathy Inc. If it looks like I want to cry, it's because I have a migraine, and I literally do, and vomit. But I just finished this movie, so while it was still fresh in my mind, I wanted to record my review, so use some empathy and just bear with me for this. The first thing that stands out to me with this movie is that it is shot entirely in black and white, which was beautiful. It is about a couple, the husband uh, unfortunately just went through a large scandal with his startup company and ended up losing a lot of people, a lot of money, and I assume that there's some sort of legal action that will be taken against him and his partners. And kind of seems like he's the fall guy for it, so unfortunately he and his wife have to make the decision to sell everything and move, you know, home with her parents. First thing that happens is the parents are trying to give them as many suggestions as they can think to get them, you know, back into normalcy and, you know, job hunting, everything like that, and Joel, the husband, is very resistant to it at first as he just he's not past that mourning period and what has transpired and he's very hurt and he's very upset and I'm sure his pride you know took a huge blow on that as well he gets in a little screaming match with his father-in-law and ends up going to a bar where he meets up with someone that he went to college with who they don't have a particularly nice name for you get the the hint that this is kind of a shady character who talks to Joel saying, hey, I have this really amazing opportunity and we're just looking for investors and you should really find some investors because I think you would benefit from this. So Joel does end up kind of not conning but strongly convincing his father-in-law to take his money for retirement and invest it in another startup unbeknownst to his wife Jessica because she keeps saying hey don't get my parents involved in this they're both retired they don't have the money they do have the money but it is for retirement so obviously he he gets his father-in-law just to drop that whole IRA into this startup which we find out is all virtual reality they have a whole system uh, in the works to have you wake up in another person's body through virtual reality the company is called empathy incorporated because they want to put someone that's having you know to them a very shitty day into someone who has a very shitty circumstance so when they wake up they're like oh I actually had a really great day so it it definitely raises a lot of social issues that are happening now with uh, the validity of some people complaining about their lives and oh you could always have it worse this is kind of showing how you could actually live it which I don't at all agree with this I think that everyone's feelings are valid if you are having a bad day you are having a bad day and I don't feel that anyone saying oh you could have it so much worse makes the things that you're experiencing any less valid to you. That always bothered me. Like, I don't know. That's a personal thing. I just feel like what you're experiencing is what you're experiencing. And basing how you feel off of anyone else is not healthy. But anyways, so Joel gets to experience this firsthand. He's told that there are several rules. You cannot look in mirrors. You cannot open doors. Or the uh, neuroscientist will pull you right out. He experiences it. N not, not a good situation that he wakes up into. And when he is back in his body, he is like a whole new person. He's a refreshed version of himself. He's very grateful for everything around him. So, what, what could go wrong? Everything goes wrong. But I will leave it off here, as this is spoiler free. I will say that things are not always what they seem. And there are a number of twists in this film, which are actually pretty decent. 
some of them, like, you kind of feel it coming, and then you get proof through subtle cues in the movie that what, what you were thinking was completely right. But nevertheless, a very enjoyable film. What did I like about this movie? I like that the the way it was shot was gorgeous. I felt like everything read to be very modern and just... It, it was so beautiful with the black and white and then how they lit everything was gorgeous. I felt the actors did a really great job. They were very believable. I like all of the feelings that it brought up in me just about how people treat each other, how people treat different classes in our society. It, you know, a lot to, if, if I would have had someone to watch this with, we would have had a lot to talk about when the movie was over. Because unfortunately, tiny three-legged cats just can't chat about movies. You can talk to them all you like, but they don't have a whole lot of feedback. I thought that the pacing in this was just perfect. It is a longer movie, I believe. It was, in total, I think the running time was an hour 30-something. And at no point did I feel like it was dragging or anything like that, which is really rare and especially very rare for me to say with my 30 second attention span. So I thought that was great. My dislikes. I mean, some of it was predictable, but I feel like if you watch a lot of suspenseful movies or thrillers or horror movies, you kind of expect things to go a certain way. Not saying that I didn't enjoy it, but some of it was a little predictable for me. And that could be a really big downfall for someone that, you know, doesn't have the same, I guess, opinion as me. Maybe that could be a, a very strong dislike for them. I thought uh, some of the audio sounded a little off, but it's not like a super duper high budget movie, so... That's to be expected. Um, I was a little bit bummed that they could have showed a lot more of the, the violence and gore that they alluded to, but it's really not like a stereotypical horror movie. It is more of a thriller. It is more suspenseful, so I gotta let that one go. I would probably rate this like a three out of five. It was very enjoyable to watch. I probably would watch it again. I could see if I could get the groom to watch it with me. I definitely like to watch it under circumstances where I don't, you know, have the beginnings of a migraine. That would be great. But, you know. Have you guys seen this movie? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you get migraines? What do you take to help with it? Because I'm, like, at the end of my rope. I've tried literally everything. And it's like... Probably like every day I end up getting a very bad headache or a migraine. So leave me some remedies. I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback. Like the video if you did like the video. Or you could like the video if you are empathetic. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell for all notifications of future uploads and live streams. You can also find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. My solo as well as reviews with the groom are available in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their amazing creators and content as well. And I really hope that this wasn't just a super scattered review, but the show must go on. And I had my hair and makeup done, so figured I might as well film it. See you later, guys.